Good morning. God bless you all this Good morning Lord. in the precious name of Jesus. Earlier this week, as I was doing some reading, I run across this poem that I felt like I was supposed to read this morning. And the title of this poem is The Gospel According to You. There's a gospel according to Matthew, to Mark, to Luke, and to John too. There's another gospel that many are reading, the gospel according to you. All teachings we find in the Bible are facts we know to be true. You must live them to make them the gospel, the gospel according to you. Many read not the words of the Bible. I will tell you what some of them do. They are reading the book you are writing, the gospel according to you. There's great power in the gospel preaching. The Bible teaches that this is true, but the sermon most likely to influence others is the gospel according to you. God helps us to be faithful. God help us to be faithful to Jesus, to live all his teachings so true, so that all may see his spirit in the gospel according to you. You are writing a gospel, a chapter each day, by things that you do, by things that you say. Others read that gospel, whether faithless or true. Say, what is the gospel according to you? Come on. That's by Leroy Brownlow. Yeah. Have a good day. Bigger than all the shadows that fall across my path. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all confusion that spread across our land. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all the giants of fear and unbelief. God is bigger than any mountain. Bigger than all the giants, bigger than all my dreams. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. He's bigger than all the seven's, bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Yes, he's bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I Bigger than all the shadows that fall across my path. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all confusions that spread across our land. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Yes, He's bigger than all the problems. Bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain. Bigger than any question, bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than Bigger than all my fears, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than any questions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears, God is bigger than Bigger than all my questions, is bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or 
cannot see. Well, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Bigger than any problem, oh, bigger you, than Lord. any mountain. Is your God bigger than anything you can or cannot see? It's coming up, though. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. to see you open the eyes of my heart Lord yes. open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out power and love as we sing holy 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 I want to see you holy holy Holy, holy, holy. 
So many things are happening in our world today, but uh, I've asked Brother Steve to sing this, and we'll sing the chorus with him, but, you know, all my hope is in Jesus. You cannot put your hope in anything other than him. Amen. I've been held by the Savior. I felt fire from above. I've been down to the river. Yes, I have. 
ain't the same A prodigal return Never be the same. Come on now. That's why I sing, yeah. All my hope is in Jesus. Yes, it is. Jesus, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. All my yesterdays are gone.
Lord, we are the ones called by your name. We humble ourselves now as we pray. Renouncing every sin and wicked way. Yes, Lord. We lift up our voice and sing, Lord, send the rain. Lord, send the rain. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Let the fire fall. Heal us one and all. Fall fresh on me. Lord, we are the ones called by your name. We humble ourselves now as we pray. Renouncing every sin and wicked way, we lift up our voices and say, Lord, send the rain, Lord, send the rain, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, let the fire fall, heal us one and all, fall fresh on
Yes, Lord. We need the rain, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. There we go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Shake hands this morning. Be friendly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 the Lord. You can be seated. Amen. You, well, you. welcome to Present True Fellowship Church. Yes, we're so glad to have you, and we're so glad to have all those who are joining us by the internet. Amen. Uh, we are uh, highly blessed and highly favored this morning because you're here. Amen. And that blesses us. Amen. And we, How many just come to love God? I ain't here to impress people. I'm here to impress God. Amen. Because I ain't going to stand before you at that last day. Well, I am going to stand before him. Amen. So I, I'm not about impressing people, but I am about pleasing God. Amen. Now, you know, uh, there's so much fear and scare in our nation anymore, especially about the... Uh, coronavirus now they got a new name for it yeah I, I don't know why they had to change the name oh, they did. anyway uh, because they said there's several kinds of coronavirus mm -hmm. but anyway listen to what psalm 91 one come says. on listen <laughs> yeah he that dwelt in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow That's of the it. almighty yep and then he says, I will say the Lord, he is what? My refuge. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. My fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Yes. How many How many is trusting in him yes. this morning? Amen. 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 Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his Ooh, wings shall yes, thou Lord. trust. His truth shall be thy shield yes. and buckler. Did you hear that? God's word is your shield and buckler. Amen. Amen. His Amen. truth. Not, not the world's truth, Come but on. God's truth. The world's got it all messed up. True. Not for pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waiteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at, any, at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh yes. thee. Yes, amen. That's right. Now, this is what I felt like the Lord said because of the, the fear of that. I fear, think this. This is our promise. Yes, it is. None of these plagues shall come nigh our dwelling. None of these plagues. So I think this. You need to go home and anoint your doorpost. Come on. Yes, That's and good. confess that word and say, none of these plagues are coming through this door. Amen. God is my protection and yes. my comfort and my strength and my shield and my buckler. And no coronavirus yes. is going to come to my house. Lord Amen. And nobody in my house is going to die. Yes. That's right. Because God is my shield this morning. 
So he says he will deliver us from the noisome pestilence. Amen. I, I, it's getting noisome. Yeah, it is. I mean, you I, you can't turn on the news that you don't hear about the coronavirus. Amen. And so I'm just this morning, I'm just claiming this. And all those I listen to the Internet, I know the enemy and how he's trying to fight us. But we need to begin to do what God asks us to do. Trust him. Amen. None of these things shall come near my dwelling place. Do you hear that? Not even come around it. Not even near it. Amen. Come None on, of these right. things shall come. That's our inheritance. For thy yes, eye, with, only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward. All right, we don't need to go past that. But anyway, I just wanted to read that this morning. I want us to begin to trust God and believe God this morning. None of these things shall yeah. come near our dwelling. That's right. Now, uh, yesterday we had a tremendous men's meeting, and we had... Good food and good company and good fellowship. and uh, But I just wanted to announce this morning that Brother Kenny Paxton will be leading the men's ministry from now on. Yes, amen. And so, uh, amen. And, amen. and uh, I appreciated it, and he was honored to do it, and I was honored to have him do it. That's right. And so the first Saturday of every month, we will have men's meetings. But he's got some other ideals, and that's fine with me. That's right. Now, Brother John Larison said that he would cook breakfast on Saturday mornings. That's what he said. And, and, and so I'm holding him to that. Not me. I'll be over there. He'll and so the, what's going to happen is the men's ministry is going to be moved here and not to a restaurant. And uh, so we can have more fellowship and we can have prayer. I believe it's important that men learn how to pray Come together. Come on, that's right. Amen. It is. You know, a lot of churches, there's more women than there is men. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. And so we need to come together as men and believe God that's for right. this church. Oh, Amen. Right. And for souls. Our greatest is desire is to leaders. see souls come to God. Amen. And so we're looking forward. We're, I, well, I'm excited about what God's going to do for you, Brother Paxton. And uh, we, we're just overjoyed that I don't have Amen. to do it no more. <laughs> <laughs> it's one more thing off my plate <laughs> and anyway I have some really good news this morning this Tuesday is our moving day yes it is after six seven I don't know how many years too many we are finally moving in amen the, the heating and furnace guys came in on I don't remember what day uh, they came in, Monday, mon Monday, Monday, <laughs> and they put all the heating and furnace in, it works great, and we got, uh, we're about, we got some things we still have to do, but we are to the point where we're ready to move out of this, this church, and let this be the church, let and the that'll church. be our home, amen, right. amen. And, uh, and so I feel like we haven't had a home for a while, and but now we are, and so anyway, we're we're grateful for all your prayers. I know some of you have been really praying for us, and we appreciate that so much this morning. But I would appreciate as many as can help me Tuesday. Amen. 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 What time did I tell you, Terry? Yeah, nine, nine or ten o'clock. See, I have this handicapped grandson. Everybody knows about him, you know, and oh, we, yeah. I love oh. him to death. But uh, he doesn't uh, take change real well. And, and so what we always have to do when we do make a change is we got to go get his room moved first and get everything hooked up. So when he gets out of school that day, he walks in, he knows that's his home now. <laughs> yeah. and, and so, uh, and so sometimes he, he, it takes him a while to get adjusted to those things. But we're just—I uh, took him over there yesterday yeah. while I was working, and he just kept going in his room, looking yeah. around, you know. And so, uh, so I'm, I'm trying it. to get him to acclimated to that place, Amen. Knowing that that's where he is going to be staying from now on. And the, only, the good thing is, you won't hear bum 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 walking across the floor. <laughs> Hopefully, because he weighs almost 300 pounds. Yeah, so. <laughs> 
So anyway, we are really blessed, and we thank all of you for your prayers and your help. Some have helped us, and we appreciate that. But I, I got to tell you, we got a lot more to do. Once we get moved out, we've got a lot of work to do upstairs. Yes. And so anybody that can come and help us, and we'll, uh, I think, Brother Kenny, we talked about having a work day. Uh, didn't we talk about it? Yes, we did. And I thought so. And so we talked about having a work day. And, and so uh, so we're looking forward to what God's doing. Amen. God has been so very good to this church and this people here. We are blessed and highly favored of God. Amen. All right. Let, Joe, come on up and take up the offering. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day outside today, isn't it? Amen. God does that just for you doesn't he? What a God we serve. Let's all stand today. We'll bring our offering forward. We'll pray afterwards if we would. Thank you, Lord. We're possessing the land. We're the people who can. We're the people who can. Under God's command. We're under God's command. We're possessing the land. We're possessing the land. We cannot be defeated. Victories in our hands in the name of Jesus. We're possessing the land. If you would stretch your hands this way. Father, we thank you, Lord. We've gathered in your yes, home today, Lord. God. Yes, Lord. Your spirit's here with us, waiting on us, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you bless us coming in, going out. Take yes, care of us Jesus. all the day. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give back what you've given unto us, Lord. Amen. Bless the church thank as you, you always Lord. have. And the church said, Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. All right. We got to do the penny march. <laughs> yeah. Gracie's stuck by herself here in the last two sermons. <laughs> she does good, though. She does. She does well. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 it away praise the lord thank you for your giving that money is used for their outings and their entertainment uh so we do appreciate it and i believe it's this friday night at uh friday 13th right uh they're going to a hotel and spend the night and swim and eat pizza and all that kind of fun stuff and no you cannot go Well, I, yeah, I better not know Friday it. The well, I better not know about it. <laughs> but praise the Lord. The kids, that's what they uh, gather this money for, is for their outings. And uh, Sister Terry's not here today, so I don't have the time or anything. But uh, I'm sure that uh, they'll be going. And not only this time, but they'll be going also another time because one of the young ladies has a broken foot. Obviously, she can't swim or do any of those fun things, so they will go at another time also so that uh, she will be able to attend. Amen? Next Sunday, uh, we will be opening up uh, the uh, membership. So if you are interested, uh, you're not a member, and you want to become a member, Please see Pastor, and he'll get you the correct information that you need because we give you what we believe. Uh, we give you all different kinds of things, so you'll know about us before you decide to uh, you know, become part of us. Amen. Don't forget to check the foyers for things from your secret pal. Next Sunday is March the 15th, and wear green uh, for St. Patty's Day. 
uh, April coming up, and we'll get those dates and times and and all all that other information. Uh, the Sight and Sound in Branson has uh, filmed their uh, theater of uh, Jesus, and it will be showing here in St. Joe in the month of April. Uh, April also is our Easter service, and we will be having a special service and Easter egg hunt that day. May 15th, 16th, and 17th, brother and sister McCartney will be here. He's been here several times, and uh, we always appreciate his ministry. Uh, would somebody pass out these uh, flyers to one per couple? Uh, because in June 18th, 19th, and 20th, we're planning to take a trip to Branson, and uh, we need to know no later than May the 18th, but this paper that they're passing out right now, it will give you the, uh, oh, I can't find mine. Ah. Anyway, what it is on there, you can read it. It's what we'd like to do, and uh, what it is is uh, we'd like to, uh, oh, Thank you, that way I can read and see what I got down there to do. Uh, we got a room rate, a real good room rate at the gazebo. Uh, and uh, you can look online to that room and see what the rooms look like, what their thing, uh, you know, they give. Uh, Smoky Mountain uh, is a comedy, and I'll tell you what, we laughed so hard at that a year when we went down there. It was hilarious. Uh, Branson Bell, now that may be an option. I don't know if everybody wants to do it and can't afford it, we'll do that. Uh, Sight and Sound uh, is NOAA this year. Uh, and they also have a mystery theater. It is expensive, but you know, depending on what they want to do uh, or how much they want to uh, spend, we will do that, okay? Uh, the food, of course, is not included in the price of your room or your inter entertainment, and it's been request that one lunch that we go and eat at Paula Dean's restaurant. Never been there, but I think it would be fun. We went a few years back. We had a good time, and we really, really did have a lot of fun together, and this is where you can go and uh, be friends with each other and enjoy each other on a whole different level than you do here in the church. Okay? All righty. Just send me back this little will or will not be going in your name. Uh, but I hope you do go. Brothers already uh, reserved five rooms at the gazebo because uh, if we don't get something reserved and if we use all five, fine. If we don't, that's fine too uh, because, uh, you, man, they fill up real quick down there. <laughs> uh, brother... Uh, uh, Steve is going to sing for what? Oh, 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 I'm looking at this and I forgot that. Sunday mornings at uh, 920, we have our uh, adult Bible class here in the sanctuary. 1030 on Sunday morning is our morning worship service. Monday and Friday at 9 a.m. is our prayer meeting here. Sister Sandy will be here and she has the do we have the doors open. Tuesday evening, 6 to 7, Pastor will be having the doors open for prayer. Wednesday at 6 p.m. is our Bible study and our prayer meeting. Thursday at 6 p.m. is our praise and worship practice. Friday at 2, uh, Brother will, Pastor will be doing the gleaning in the word. And uh, hopefully he'll be over there this, here this week for it. He wasn't last week. Slacker. Oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> oh, yeah, i got to have to shut this thing off. Brother Steve has a special for us today. Praise God. It's not what I always call you at. To Christ our King, our risen Savior, hallelujah, to Jesus our Lord, yes, amen, amen. glory, 
glory to the Father, for He loves us. Hallelujah to God our King. Glory, 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 glory to God. is excited about God. Yes, amen. amen. I am very excited about him. Excited about what he's doing in this church and he, the people that he's bringing in. We we love each and every one of you and we continually in my prayers. Amen. Uh, because I believe that prayer is important and us praying for one another is very important. And so you're continually in my prayers, and I, I thank God for each and every one of you. And uh, I, uh, God had started to change the way I pray for certain people. And uh, I, uh, this is the way I've been praying for some of you, is that the prayers have went up. How many have been prayed over? Many times. But I'm praying now that there be a manifestation of the prayer in your life that we begin to see the answer to those prayers amen you know oftentimes we pray and we think well when god are you going to answer this prayer but god always does it in his own time he, he ain't ruled by you <laughs> some guy i'm glad he ain't because <laughs> we'd have him like johnny on the spot <laughs> And we'd have him like a genie rub three times and make a wish and it happened immediately, you know. And, and so, but the, the, the reasons I think that sometimes God does not answer our prayers immediately is that he wants our faith to be built. And we have to begin to trust God that he hears us and, and that he will answer those prayers. But it will be according to his time and not ours. It will be according to his will. Now, the thing is about prayer, sometimes we pray amiss. Sometimes we ask to consume things of our own lust. Amen. And so God's not going to answer that kind of prayer. But God will answer a prayer that comes from the heart and is according to his will. 
Amen. And so when we begin to pray, this is not my message. I don't know why I even got there, where I got there, how I got there, but I'm there. And anyway, uh, I believe in the power of prayer, and I believe that's why I have prayer so much in this church. And I have it on Tuesday night. I pray down here every night. I'm down here every night at 6 o'clock praying. I, I even have to be rude sometimes because my prayer time with God is very important to me. And I love people, but when 6 o'clock rolls around, my daughters will tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm going downstairs. <laughs> I'm going to pray. And, and, and so at 6 o'clock, I'm down here praying, except when they have practice or Bible study. Uh, but I'm down here every night praying and believing God for each and every one of you. And so I really believe that prayer is very important. It's very important to this church. And uh, if the, I believe the church that prays together stays together. I know you heard the family, but I believe the church that prays together stays together. Because if you're praying for one another, you ain't got time to talk about one another. Do you get me? You get me? If you're praying for one another, you ain't got time to talk about one another. And more likely, you won't talk about one another if you're praying for them. Amen? So let's get off that. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we're grateful to be in your house today. As always, your presence is so welcome, Father. We thank you for the wonderful worship, and we praise you and give you glory and honor, for you're certainly worthy of our praise this morning, God. God, let us come to you humbly this morning. Open our ears and open our eyes. Let us see and perceive what you have to say to us, Father. Let us not be dull of hearing or dull of sight. But let us have a clear hearing and a clear vision this morning, God. Let your Holy Spirit have his way. Speak through me. I'm but your vessel, Father. Have your way this morning. Speak to hearts this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have this verse. I, uh, I get up at 4 o'clock and I have my devotions. And, and uh, this verse popped out to me while I was reading it. It's found in Matthew chapter 20, verse 16. So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few are chosen. I remember as a kid, see, I was always short. And when we'd have a sporting event at school, you know, they'd choose teams, and they'd have team captain. I never a team captain. And, and they... They always called out the tallest and the strongest and the, and the one more th athletic, you know. And I was always down there at the end. And they said, well, they look around, there ain't nobody else, so they had to choose me. <laughs> and the thing is this, that in that choosing, uh, it said many are called. We're all called, but few of us are chosen of God. Now, this is where I want to come with this at, because, see, uh, we, as we are, as, if we look at people, we call them in a way that God does not call. Because we look at people and we look at their outward appearance and their physical appearance and we look at their ability and, oh, they, they, we want them on our side, man, because we're going to beat that other guy with that guy on my side, you know. And, and so they're called but, and, and they may be chosen, but not in the fashion that God chooses. The Bible says God chooses the weak things of the world. I'm right there. <laughs> Choosing me good, man, because I am not a strong person, amen? And so he says this, uh, that many shall be called, but few chosen. Let me ask you a question this morning. Do you believe you were chosen by God? Do you believe God chose you? He called you, but he chose you, amen? You're a chosen vessel to honor his name, amen? And he said, what does this mean? What is the difference between being called and chosen? How can we make sure that we are one of those chosen people? We have to, to figure out this uh, verse. We have to go back to the very first verse in Matthew 20. And it's a parable of the wedding feast. And it says, well, Jesus actually starts off with a parable. He tells the story of a king whose son was getting married. 
He sent out many wedding invitations, but on the big day, not a single guest showed up. That would be discouraging. And, and when the king sent out his servants to find out what was going on with the invited guests, he turned out that they were just not willing to go. They all had one excuse or another why they could not attend the king's banquet. They were more concerned with doing their own thing. Do you hear me? They were more concerned about doing their own thing. And even treated the invitation with contempt. That you know that there's a lot of people in the world today that are more concerned about doing their own thing and have even treated God's invitation with contempt. All her call, but few are chosen. The invitation went out and many chose not to accept that invitation. They were all called, but they didn't choose to come. So the king got very discouraged. He said, I want you to go out and get everybody you can find. Get me the beggar. Get me the street people. Get me anybody. Get them to come to this feast. Now, you've got to understand about a feast in the time of Jesus. They provided the wedding garments. You didn't have to, the, the, the bride, the, the groom's father provided the wedding garments. How many knows that Jesus provided you a wedding garment? Without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Amen. Pure as snow. And, and so he called, out, he, he called out the ones that he thought were worthy to come. But they wouldn't come. So he went and got the ones who everybody thought were unworthy of the feast. Is anybody here worthy? We're all unworthy. That, well, that's true, brother. But we still are unworthy of him <laughs> because of what he's done for us. And the king was furious when he heard the report. And he sent them out again and then telling them to invite anyone they saw in the streets. To invite anybody. Has a, he not commanded us to go out on the highways and the byways and compel them to come into the house of the Lord? And so he has called everybody, but not many are chosen. The invitation went out, but they did not choose. Now, there's, this story goes on and it tells us that when the king came into the wedding feast there was one guy there he didn't have the garments on he was called he was chosen but he didn't want to come the way God wanted him to come how many of us try to work out our own salvation our own way how many bargain with God I'll serve you if you do this you can't bargain with God God's salvation is clear cut. It's through the blood of the Lamb shed on the cross and through repentance and turning your heart to God. God's salvation is clear cut. You can't put your own garment on. You can't wear a garment that pleases you. Now listen to this. Listen. Many people put the garment of good works on. I'm a good person. I do good things for people. I'm going to make it in. They refuse to wear the king's garments. They're trying to work out their own salvation in their own way and not accepting the way that God, Jesus made. He said, I am the way, the truth, the light. There is no other way to the Father except through me. And he also goes on and says this, if you try to ascend any other way, you're a thief and a robber. Wow. So, brother and sister, you can't work your way to heaven. You can't be good enough to get to heaven. You have to accept Jesus as your Savior to get to heaven. The only thing he recognizes is a blood-bought saint that has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. That's what God sees. So what does it mean to be called? The word calling is used several times throughout the Bible. Different context. In this instance, Jesus' word, word called as an invitation. He's given them an invitation. He, he's inviting them to come in. But the only way they can be chosen is to receive the invitation. 
An invitation to something more than life, uh, live serving only ourselves. An invitation to live a life together with Christ, serving God and experiencing the fulfillment of that life brings life to us. This is a calling that God puts in our heart. Every one of you heard his call. That's why you're here today. At one point or time in your life, you heard the call of the Holy Spirit. And you responded and you became a chosen vessel to God. Anyone who gets a chance to hear the gospel and makes a decision about whether or not to become a disciple is considered to be among many who are called. Many people receive this invitation. Jesus gives the disciple the job of going out and inviting people. Every one of us are out to go out in the highways and byways and invite people to come in and meet Jesus. And I'm not necessarily talking about this church. I'm talking about you individually. You are the church wherever you're at. We are the temple of the living God. So wherever you are at, that you are, you are obligated to invite people to come in and, t and, and, and call and take. Okay, I'll get it out here in a minute. <laughs> You're, you, you got the invitation. You give the invitation. You give the call. But they've got to choose. Every one of you chose him. And so we have to make that choice. Now, now it's a, listen to what this. What does it mean to be chosen? Well, Noah preached to the, the coming flood to the old world for a hundred years. I'm telling you, I could get discouraged if I was Noah. But only eight souls were saved in that hundred years of preaching. Many were called, but few were chosen. To the cities of the plain, Lot preached, but only three souls were chosen from the men. Many were called, but few were chosen. 600,000 men besides women and children passed through the Red Sea, but only two entered the promised land. Every one of the 600,000 were called, but only two chose to enter in to the promised land. How many knows who they were? Anybody know? Caleb and Joshua. They chose God. They chose to go in. Gideon went to fight the Midianites with 32,000 men, but only 300 were allowed to participate in the victory. 32,000 were called, but only 300 were chosen. So there are many types of many called, but few are chosen. You're chosen to do something for God. You've been called, but now God has chose you, and God has placed within you the ability to affect other people's lives. To change the situations in people's life. Come on, brother and sister. We are called, but then we are chosen. God has given us a gifting or something in our life that he chooses for us to use that gift. You're all vessels. The expression is supposed to refer to the manner in which the ancients selected men for recruiting their armies when he said many are called and many are chosen. See how the Romans did this? The called and the chosen? They brought up the army. Then they began to bring them up by groups. And certain groups were chosen. Because they were renowned men who knew how to fight in the battle. And so they chose them. They were the, the on guard. They were the first in the battle. They were the ones that would turn the tide in the battle. Brother and sister, you are chosen to turn the tide. You've been chosen by God. And that is the most important person in the world to choose you is God. Amen. So he has chose us to fight this battle. Listen to what it says on Luke uh, 9.24. Or let's go to 9.23. Nine, and he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall shave, shave, boy, save it. 
Not shave it, save it. <laughs> so we are called, we are chosen. But listen to what he says here. He says, if any man will come after me, the call was there. And he said, and, let, and then he chooses him. But in that choice, there has to be a part of us that says, i got to deny myself. Because, brother and sister, a lot of times it's not convenient to serve God. Come on. I remember when I was in a busy restaurant and I was running the window and I was calling people, uh, waitresses up for orders, and all of a sudden the presence of God hit me. The restaurant's full, people all around me. Tears start running down my face, and I can't stop it. And, and I said, I told God, this is not the place of the time. He said, you are chosen, and this is the place and the time. And I don't know how many in that restaurant I got to come to church. Because they seen my life, kind of what Kenny was talking about and kind of what Terry was talking about this morning. We are called and we are chosen, but we are to exemplify our Savior. People are to see Jesus in us. They're to see the love of God in us, the joy of God in us, the peace of God in us. Oh, we struggle with this old nature, but yet we are overcomers through Him. We don't have to choose to be defeated this morning. We can choose to overcome this morning. We we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Amen. God has called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light, and he has called us, and we have been chosen. I don't live back there anymore. I live here with him. He is my light, and he is my savior. He is my deliverer and my healer. He is my baptizer. He is my everything. I have been called, but I have been chosen also. And I accepted that invitation, and I don't want to ever turn back from that invitation. Why are there so few who are chosen? Because not many are willing to pay the price. Listen to what he says in Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Narrow is the gate. Do you hear me? Narrow. A tight place. I didn't write it all down. Narrow is the gate, straight is the way. But broad is the path that leadeth to destruction. It's easier to walk a broad path than a tight path. You ever been on a path that was right on the cliff and you just had to really stay close to the edge? You know, if you made one wrong step, you're going to fall off. Jesus brings us to this place where the path begins to get narrower and narrower. Because he begins to demand more and more of us. And if we really begin to realize that in that path we're walking, we have to begin to deny ourselves more and more. How, how, how do you relate to that? To any, denying of yourself is denying things that will hinder your walk with God. Amen. But there's another way that we deny ourselves. In the denial of ourselves, but when it's not convenient for us. Come on. When, when it's not convenient, sometimes God's asking us to deny ourselves. Maybe a brother calls you and says, I need help, but it's not really convenient for you. But God call, had that brother call you, you do not, and in that point, you deny yourself and you do what God called you to do is to help brothers and sisters in the Lord. Sometimes you got to put the flesh aside and begin to do what God has called you to do, whatever that may be, amen. And so, brother and sister, he is coming, he's coming to that point. He said he who will save his life will lose it. We've got to make a choice this morning. We've been called. We've got to realize we are chosen this morning to come out of that place where we live in the flesh and we begin to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't overcome this flesh in our own power. Amen? Deny the flesh and, and, and the power of the Holy Spirit will help you overcome 
So the reason it's hard, we have to give up everything. Ever give up anything for God? Jesus told the disciples that we've given up our houses and our homes and our family. We've given up everything. Jesus said, great is your reward in heaven. Are you working for this time or are you working for that time? Come on, because what here is nothing compared to what's there. And what you give up here is nothing compared to what God is getting ready for you in heaven. And so when we begin to deny ourselves, when we begin to deny our own pleasure, and we put others ahead of us, the Bible even tells us to esteem one another more highly than ourselves. That means to put them above us. See, the problem with most Christians, we got ourselves up here and everybody else down here. And we, 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 we're the chosen. Look at me. I'm going to ride across my back. I'm chosen of God. And, and so we, we tout it like we're some great thing. But we're not unless we've been chosen by God. And we got to realize in that choosing, there's going to be some sacrifices. Amen. You're going to be able to not do some things you might have done before. Now, i got to tell you this. that The Bible says that we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. So what may be a, a bondage to you is not a bondage to somebody else. We all have to work it out. Amen? What may be holding you back may not hold somebody else back. So we've got to make that decision in our lives, that, that denying of ourselves. So when God calls us, you know, do, look, at, look at how God called the disciples. He says, Jesus comes up, follow me. Peter and John drop their fishing nets, drop their boats, and pick up and follow him. You don't think they denied something? They denied their livelihood. They denied their family. They denied whatever they had going on in their life. They denied it all to follow Jesus because they realized they had been called, but they knew they had been chosen by him. They recognized the call, but they recognized who was choosing them. And they gave their all to him. They made that decision that serving him was greater than anything else, any fishing business or any other business, being a tax collector, what Matthew was, whatever. They all chose to follow him. He called them and they chose. And they made that decision to deny their families and their homes and their businesses and to follow Jesus. Why I say it's not easy because every one of them almost come to a bad end except John they tried to kill him they boiled him in oil they couldn't kill that old guy so they put him on an island where he couldn't talk to nobody but God came and talked to him giving the book of revelations I, when God calls you, I don't care what other people do. You're a chosen vessel of God. He's going to work wherever you're at. Amen. And he don't care if you're on an island or in a cave or wherever you're at. Many are called, but few are chosen. Peter writes this in 2 Peter 1.10. Wherefore, the rudder, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election, or election means chosen, sure. For if you do these things, you shall what? Never fall. Amen. Never fall. Did you get that? You will never fall. So how do we do that? By doing things which, that he writes just previous in verse 5 through 8. Now this is what he writes. But also for this very reason, giving the diligence, add, giving all diligence. How I many you know what diligent means? It means to make haste. All diligence, add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, person. Can we go back to self-control? How many has ever lost self-control? Driving down the street, somebody whips in front of you. Self-control went out with a whip. <laughs> or you hit your thumb with a hammer. One right there. <laughs> and 
And if you don't watch it, you lose all self-control. Or, or at Walmart, and it says 10 items or less, and the guy in front of you got two cartfuls. Can he read? <laughs> and the clerk looks at him like, he don't get it. <laughs> So he says this, and he says, with all per self-control, perseverance to perseverance, godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. So when he calls us, he chooses us to live this life that pleases him. And in that life, we have self-control, we have godliness, we have kindness, we have gentleness, we have all those things. For this is what he wants us to abound in. And how are you going to win the soul unless you love them? You can't win somebody you don't love. People can tell when you love them. They can. I told you last week, I think it was, I, I, I told God I love him. He said, you're just saying it. <laughs> I said, no, I mean it. No, he said, you're just saying it. I said, no, God, I really do love you. No, nope, I don't get it. I don't feel it. I begin to feel like Peter. Three times. If you love me, feed my sheep. I come to that third time, I said, God, I know I love you. I really love you. He said, now I get it. He said, I've called you and I've chosen you. But your love cannot be hollow. It has to be with your heart. To really know God's calling and God's choosing is through our heart. Many, the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees were all called. They were all chosen. But yet, it was all ritual and formality with them. They served God in the law, but not in the love of God. They served God in the law, but not in the spirit of it, God. They didn't understand how that God was more concerned about their heart than was what they were doing. He called them out of that. He chose them, but they refused. They were back in the legalism and back to doing what they thought would earn them, themselves into heaven. And if we don't watch it as Christians, we can fall in that same thing and, 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 and almost make a law out of prayer or make a law out of reading the Word of God or make a law out of witnessing. Brother and sister, it has to be done from the heart. It has to be with love. God responds to that. And when we are called and chosen, God begins to change this. He begins to change this thing because this is what's corrupt. This is where all evil comes from. Amen. And so God begins to change the heart because what's in the inside will come on the outside. What you look like on the inside is what people see on the inside, outside of you. And, uh, you know, you ever been around those who uh, uh, nothing pleases them? And, and when, you, when you get it by them, you wish you had never got there. Amen. And because what's in here is coming out, they're, they're unhappy. They don't know God's love. They don't know God's peace. They don't know God's joy. They, they're still living in that flesh. Uh, I'm not, make no mistake here. There's a lot of people who are carnal, but they're saved. When Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, he was writing to a carnal church, but he called them brothers and sisters in the Lord. A lot of Christians are carnal, but God's trying to choose them, trying to bring them to a point of excellence in Him where they display His image and not the image of the world. See, you know what the world's looking for? A genuine Christian. A Christian who really, when he says, I love you, he means it. And if you ask him to do something, he's going to back up that love by his action. He's going to show you that he loves you. He'll go beyond he, he, Listen to what Jesus said. If they ask for your cloak, give them their co your coat too. Come on. He, he wants us to go beyond. When he chooses us, he's choosing us to go beyond what we would normally do. So 
So only those who really want to follow Jesus in his footsteps, as he instructs them, gets grace to do what is written above. They get the grace of God to do it. Because we can't do it in ourselves. There's some people I need the Holy Spirit to love. I'm just honest. I, I got to have the Holy Spirit to love them. Because I want to pop them. <laughs> I said, Lord, help me. Man, I'm getting ready to close. I had a real short sermon today, man. Not even, it's not even 11 o'clock yet. <laughs> it isn't. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not into that daylight saving time. <laughs> so, anyway, few are chosen. And the thing is, there's no qualification. There's no qualification to be chosen. You don't got to be a good person for him to choose you. He called every one of us. I guarantee you when he called us, we were a mess or we were not a very good person. And he chose us anyway. He doesn't require us to be a good person to be chosen. Amen. I've had people come. Well, when I, get, when I get this done and get this right now, I'll come. I said, no, no, no. You need to come now. Tomorrow will not be there, maybe. You need to come now. You are chosen to come to God now. The Bible says that this is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. Today is the day of salvation. And so you have been chosen, and, you, and God doesn't look for your qualifications or your ability or your talent. Aren't you glad? I can't sing with a hoot. I can't play an instrument. I, I can't even clap good. My wife told me not to even clap. <laughs> and then she called me a name this morning. <laughs> I can feel the love. <laughs> so... We, have to, we don't have to be qualified to be chosen. If we had to be qualified, there would be an empty building here. I guarantee you, I didn't have nothing that God wanted. He could live without me just as fine as with me. I was chosen by God because I responded to the call. And as I responded to the call, I realized that things was going to be different in my life from now on. I couldn't live like I used to. I couldn't do the things I used to do. I couldn't do any of that. I couldn't have the parties. Couldn't, well, I smoked for a while. I couldn't do that after a while. God just said, nope, you're done with that. I said, okay. You're the boss. And so when we make that choice, we sometimes we prevent him from doing things in our life because we're not willing to deny ourselves. And God can't move in your life if you're denying him. Is that not a truth? God cannot do some things in your life if you're denying him. You've got to choose him this morning. He's called you. And he's called you to more than what you are. God has called us to do the most extraordinary things. But he didn't look at our qualifications to see if we could do it. He didn't look at a shepherd boy and thought, he's a giant killer. God gave him the power of the Holy Spirit to slay that giant. So God's not looking for intelligent or talented or any other kind of God is looking for people who will respond to him. I like that verse when he said he chose the foolish things to confound the wise, because I think he chose me. When my pastor came to me and said, I want you to teach the adults, I said, you got the wrong guy. So for the first three months, then poor people endured. Because I read right out of the book. I read it word for word. <laughs> I can't do that with my sermons anymore. It messes me up. 
And so I read for word for word, and I said one day, I was talking to God, I said, I am tired of this. He said, and I think them people are too. <laughs> I said, what are we going to do about it? He said, you're going to get in that book and start studying. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, that's some denying. <laughs> And I make a joke about some of this, but God really does want you to choose him. Amen. He's called you. And you know when you make the choice, there's going to be some hardship. I, I get upset with preachers that tell you, well, if you get saved, everything's going to be great. That's a lie. It's going to be worse. Because yes, the devil didn't fight you when you're just not doing anything. But when you get saved... He's on the war for path with you. You're on collision course with him. And so I get upset when they tell you that because that's not the truth. I don't tell people that. I got to tell them they're going to they're going to face a battle. But it's worth it. It's worth it. At the end, when you stand before Jesus, he said, enter in thy good and faithful servant. Well done. Enter into the joys of the Lord. Brother and sister, when he says that, you're going to be glad you denied everything in your life. You're going to be glad you went through every hardship. You're going to be glad you did whatever he asked you. Because when he says those words, that is the most powerful words to be said to any other. But he could say another word. Depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I knew you not. Amen. Well, didn't we do this in your name and that in your name? Didn't we cast out devils? Didn't we heal the sick? What made the difference? The heart. Amen. They did it to be seen. Jesus says that whatsoever we do as unto him, do it as unto the Lord. We don't do it to be seen of men. Or we don't play guitars or drums or anything else to be seen of men. We don't preach to be seen of men. We preach to be seen of God. That we be rewarded by Him. Because, brother and sister, accolades of men will only last for a while. But the accolades of Jesus will last for eternity. For eternity. So how you serve God matters. He has called you. He has chosen you. So what are you going to do with what he's called you to do? What are you going to do with what God has chosen you to do? You all know. How many here knows the will of God? Amen. You know the will of God for your life. You know what he has chosen you to do. So what are you going to do? Are you going to deny yourself and do it? Or are you just going to ignore the call and the chosen? And I don't think you'd lose your soul, Brother Tony, but I think you'd lose some rewards. I think you lose some rewards. I think you're going to get to heaven. You're going to be a little disappointed because you didn't do what you should have done. It says that th their soul will be saved. The rewards will be burned up, but their soul will be saved. Brother and sister, it's your choice this morning. How are you going to serve God? Are you going to serve him with all your heart? How did God ask us to love him? With all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might, with all our strength. To love the Lord thy God. And the second commandment is the same as the first. To love the Lord thy neighbor as thyself. How we love our neighbor? With all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might, with all our strength. Who's your neighbor? Not the guy who lives next door to you. The guy walking next to you. The guy you work with. The, your family. They're neighbors. They're the ones that need to see you denying yourself and choosing God above the things of this world. It's easy to follow the crowd. But to go against the crowd, that's not easy. Amen? That's everybody saying. I know Brother Kenny wants prayer this morning. We're pray. Well. Glory. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So anybody needs prayer, come on up front. We're going to pray for you. Amen. Amen. We're, we're going to anoint you with oil, and we're going to believe God for your healing. Amen. And you got anybody help me come up and pray. Come on up and help me, guys. Girls, women, whatever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father God, right now, we hold up Brother Kenny, God. We pray for this ankle, God, that you would heal this sprain, God. God, make him whole, Father. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God, our healer, God. And we put our trust and faith in you, God. Heal him in the name of Jesus. Restore that ankle to his health, Lord God. Make him whole, Father God. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Thank you for healing him, Lord God. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, right now we pray for Sister Elaine, God. Touch her body, God, from the top of her head to the tips of her toe. God, she's a chosen vessel, God. Touch her. Heal her, Lord God. Reclaim healing right now in the name of Jesus. Restore her to health, Father God. We bind the enemy to come against her, Lord God. We bind him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for healing, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You need prayer too, brother? Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. God's good, is he not? Amen. All right. Shake hands.